Welcome to Meme Reads, where we narrate the best stories and memes from various subreddits. If you enjoy this content, please like this video and subscribe to the channel where we post content like this every Monday and Friday. Today on r slash MIDA, where OP's husband gets her pregnant, abandons her, and then gets mad at her. This next post is by Throwaway I Tried. Reddit, am I being unreasonable for not trying harder to let my ex-husband know that our son passed away? Both myself and my partner were 28 when I found out that I was pregnant. We were together for four years. Personally, I didn't want the child. My work was offering potential advances within my position, and I was excited for it. But, after a lot of talking, we decided to go forward with the pregnancy. When I was around 20 weeks, just after finding out the gender, he disappeared. I couldn't contact him, and he wouldn't answer the phone or any of my messages. I got worried and messaged his mother and found out that he was living back with her and was overwhelmed with the situation. He kept paying his part of the bills over to my bank account each month, but I received no contact. I even tried going over there, but nothing. By about 27 weeks, I gave up trying. Gave up crying and just got on with what I thought was a future as a single mother. I bought everything needed for the pregnancy over the next couple of weeks and set it all up. At 31 weeks, I started having pains, but it was put down to Braxton Hicks. And for those of you who don't know, according to Google, Braxton Hicks contractions, also known as prodromal or false labor pains, are contractions of the uterus that are typically not felt until the second or third trimester of the pregnancy. Braxton Hicks contractions are the body's way of preparing for true labor, but they do not indicate that labor has begun. Just before 32 weeks, my waters broke, and I went into labor, with the baby coming very quickly. He went straight into NICU. I sent messages, and I even called my ex-husband and his mother, but no response. Less than a week later, my son passed away due to complications of early birth. I again tried to contact my ex-husband and his mother. I left voicemails and messages, but nothing. The next few weeks were a blur, but with the help of my mother and father, his funeral was arranged. They tried to contact my ex-husband and his mother also, but still nothing. I sent a few more text messages, nothing. I'm assuming that we were all probably blocked, but honestly, at that point, I didn't care. I was just so broken. His funeral came and went, and it was beautiful and horrible. I stopped messaging and told my family not to bother after the funeral had passed. I just couldn't deal with it anymore. About five months after my son's birth and death, my ex-husband turned up. He just let himself in. I wasn't even home. But when I got back, he was instantly hostile. The flat was clearly not set up for accommodating a small child. He demanded to see his son. I just broke down and told him what happened. I have never seen him so sad and angry. He stormed out, slamming the door on his way out. Within half an hour, I got a nasty phone call from his mother, followed by messages from his siblings and his other family members. They sent messages like, how dare I not let them know something so serious? And how could I hide something like that out of petty and spite? I truly didn't. I really did try. But I couldn't keep trying. It's been nearly three weeks now of them being awful. I was speaking to my sister this weekend, and she said, To be frank, it was a bit of a jerk move not to keep trying. They deserve to know. Was it? I tried so hard to let them know. But I was struggling so hard too. I lost my son too. Am I being unreasonable? Should I have done more? What? There is so much wrong with this, OP. You are obviously not the a-hole here. I mean, the audacity of your ex's family and your sister to even imply that you do? Oh my god, it's just insane. Edit. Thank you all so much for your responses. Sorry for not replying to any. Reading them has been a lot. Honestly, I'm going to drink a bottle of wine, or two, read your kind responses, and cry myself to sleep. Writing this all out and living it again has been hard. Unfortunately, I'm not able to change my locks. The landlord said no. But my tenancy ends on the 12th of June, and I already have a new flat to move into. And thankfully, my dad has been able to cover the cost of a private therapist, and I see her again Tuesday. Thank you all so much again for your kind words. Second edit. If I had realized that this was going to blow up so much, then I probably would have just posted it on my main. If you see this post anyway, read it, Lewis. Then read it again. Then read the comments. Then just leave me alone. Thank you all for your comments. I'm going to show my therapist the post when I see her and talk it through. But honestly, this has helped a lot, even if I did cry quite a bit. I'm going to sleep now and won't be back on this post. But thank you all. OP, I'm really glad that Reddit helped you, and I'm really glad that you got help through a therapist. What he and his family did was unforgivable. They are absolutely trash people. And the fact that you could blame yourself even a little bit after everything that you've been through just shows how much they've put you through. He abandoned you when times got tough, and his family helped him do it. This was the hardest moment of your life, and the man who did this to you is running away like a child, and then he comes back to blame you after everything that you went through without him? OP, you get a rock solid 0 to 5 buttholes. You made the best out of the worst situation anybody could possibly go through. However, the sperm donor who did this to you, he gets a rock solid 5 out of 5 buttholes for being a piece of garbage abandoning father 
And then another 5 out of 5 buttholes for coming back and crying like a child when he abandoned his own kid. I think his family should get a rock solid 5 out of 5 buttholes as well for aiding and abetting that piece of trash. I know this may sound a little bit harsh, but because of my own personal experiences, I hate deadbeat dads. I can't believe even after he abandoned his child, he thinks he would have had a right to be in that kid's life. This next post is from Own Throwaway Fish. Am I being unreasonable for using my friend's quote logic against her and making her cry? I'm a 36 year old female and I went no contact with my narcissistic family last year after I was done being their scapegoat. My friend was encouraging me to quote, call my mother and reconcile for Mother's Day. And I explain again about the emotional and a mental abuse that I went through and my mother's refusal to take accountability or seek therapy. And then she lectured me on how, quote, it's hard being a parent. She's a parent and I'm not. And that, quote, as the eldest, you should have helped your mother out around the house more and helped out with your younger siblings. And then I should let bygones be bygones and call my mother for Mother's Day. I then told her, so you think if I do more chores and accepted more parentification as a kid, I wouldn't have been abused? If it's hard to be decent to your kids, then you shouldn't be a parent. Maybe you should have helped your abusive ex-husband around the house more. Maybe you shouldn't have had dinner 10 minutes late because, you know, his job is stressful and it's hard being a provider and a father. Next month is Father's Day. You should call and reconcile with him. How could I, as a child, stop the abusive behavior of an adult when you as an adult couldn't stop your husband from abusing you? She cried and walked off. Our mutual friends agree that she was wrong to pressure me to reconcile with my mother, but she meant well and didn't understand and you took it too far. I did it to make a point on how abuse isn't okay from anybody, even your parents. Am I being unreasonable? Man, to be honest guys, I'm really on the fence about this one, but I did really like this comment from Snoodoodles down below. OP, I definitely don't think you're being unreasonable here. I hate people like that. I have a strained relationship with my mother as well, and it grinds my gears when someone tells me I have to make up with her because she's my mom. Your friend needs to get out of her bubble and realize that some parents just aren't good parents. On that point, I couldn't agree more. Some people are just not good parents, and I don't think some people realize that, especially if you've grown up with really good parents, you know, somebody you can look up to and idolize and respect. You couldn't even imagine them being such a piece of trash, but some people are. However, getting on to the point of the story, I definitely get where you're coming from, OP, and she had no right to butt into your life like that, but... You did kind of snap back at her very harshly and that was a really sick burn. So I could see how she would be upset by that, but she did kind of call for it. I, I don't know guys, maybe you guys could tell me down below what you think, but I'm a little on the fence. I don't think I could give a score for her. However, her friend definitely deserves a 1.5, maybe two out of five buttholes for butting into your life. But did she really deserve for you to take apart her logic so harshly right in front of her face? Like you weren't wrong, but Dang, OP, you kind of burned her sick. Like, I don't know, it was really harsh. It might have been too far, but I don't know, maybe she deserved it. But you guys let me know down below, was it too harsh? Was it not too harsh? Was it not enough? I don't know. This next post is by usedmention1364. Am I the bad guy for embarrassing my cousin and getting us kicked out of a restaurant? I'm a 25-year-old woman and I don't have any kids yet. I never really wanted them growing up, but I figured I'll eventually have kids in the future once I get my life together. My cousin Sarah has two bad behaved kids from a previous relationship and a newborn baby with her boyfriend MJ who's 40. Last night, my mother, sister, Sarah and I went to a sushi restaurant and this was my first time having sushi. After we ordered, I had a hard time using the chopsticks. My cousin started obnoxiously laughing. The waiter came over and asked if I wanted training wheels, which is a little plastic item that attaches to the chopsticks and it helps you hold them in place. My cousin laughed and said, Sorry about her. She constantly embarrasses herself and us. I just gave her the side eye and put the training wheels on. When it came time to order desserts, her boyfriend MJ finally joined us, claiming that he was quote, busy. She went on to tell her boyfriend about how stupid and slow I was for not knowing how to use the chopsticks and how the waiters and everyone now know how much of an embarrassment I am. My mom asked her what her problem was and she goes on a rant about how I'm so embarrassing and that it's no wonder I'm jealous of her being a mother and how no one wants to have kids with me. I finally had enough. I said, I don't want kids because I don't want them to turn out like spoiled brats like yours. And you're calling me an embarrassment? Didn't your boyfriend MJ just have a baby with you and his wife? Wait, what? Your baby literally has a sibling a week apart from her. You probably learned how to use chopsticks by eating his wife's leftovers. I guess when she was attacking me, it was fine because everyone turned on me. It got so loud that management had to get involved. Sarah was screaming and crying. MJ was yelling at me, and my mom and sister were berating me for being mean. Management brought us the bill and told us to please pay it and leave. My mom paid the entire bill, but my sister said that I was a butthole for embarrassing Sarah and getting us kicked out, and how she's probably going through some postpartum depression. 
Now, I don't know if I went too far, seeing as she's probably going through some post-baby stress. Am I the bad guy here? Alright, first of all, there's a lot going on with this post already. But luckily we do have an update. Thank you all for the overwhelming responses. I've been wanting to put Sarah in her place for a while now, and I'm just glad that I did. However, Sarah's mom got involved and is mad at me. Apparently, MJ told Sarah that him and his wife were separating. Sarah found out that he lied because she was secretly stalking his wife's Facebook page and got the shock of her life when his wife, not Sarah, posted a newborn baby picture and MJ was there for the birth. Sarah did the math and realized that he had gotten both of them pregnant the week of his birthday. She confronted him and he confirmed it. He also said that she'll have to get over it or he'll leave. So she stayed and is now constantly in shambles. Not my problem. Now on to the problem. She kept the wife's baby a secret and only told her mom, who told my mom, who told my sister and I. So they said that they were pissed because I wasn't supposed to repeat it. But I didn't know that it was classified information. After like a week, that's all everyone talked about. Sarah's mom, my aunt, reached out to me this morning and said that Sarah's problem with me is that I always said that I don't like kids and only a quote, horrible person won't like kids and that I was mean to her kids about two months ago. Two months ago, she wanted to go to a party with MJ and asked me to watch her kids. All three of them. For free. I told her no because they're untrained and I don't feel comfortable watching a newborn. And she'll have to pay me to put up with the other two. So I guess that's why she's still holding grudges? Regardless, Sarah's mom said that she was having a really hard time after finding out about the outside baby, who technically is the inside baby as Sarah's baby is the outside baby, but whatever. And she wants me to apologize for putting her business out there to everyone. She got my mom and sister involved, so I just called Sarah and apologized. She just said, I don't care what you have to say, and hung up. Regardless, I held up my end of the bargain. Hopefully this gets blown over because ya girl is tired. Man OP, this story was crazy. I don't think you're in the wrong here at all because you didn't know that it was a secret. But man, I love that when she was being a jerk to you, you really put her in her place. I'd give your cousin 3 out of 5 buttholes because there's just no excuse for being that mean at the restaurant. And because she has no right at getting upset at you for exposing her little secret for being a mistress. Honestly, cheaters get zero sympathy from me. I'm glad that her little secret is now all over the internet. This next post is from Zealous Ideal Weight. Am I being unreasonable for telling my husband that the nanny is in charge? My husband and I have three kids. The youngest is 10 months old, the middle child is 3 years old, and the youngest is 6. My husband has a high profile job and it means he's gone very often. I work a regular 9 to 5. We originally used daycare for our oldest, but my middle child was born right in the middle of the pandemic, so we hired a nanny. She originally worked when I did, but by the time the baby came around, I was very overwhelmed with doing bath time and bedtime on my own, on top of developing postpartum depression. After a breakdown, we spoke with the nanny and she agreed to adjust her hours, so she's helping me with dinner, bath, and bed. We've gotten close over the past six months doing this. In many ways, she's become like a third parent to the kids. She's so good with them. We've created a routine that works well. I tend to the baby during bath and bed, and she handles the older two. It's a nice rhythm, and my mental health has gotten so much better. My husband isn't traveling all the time, but most nights he isn't even home for dinner and bed. He will help me on the weekends when he's home, but because he's gone so often, he's reluctant to be firm with the kids. There are times when he comes home when our nanny is there. He tries to help her with bath and bed, but he allows the boys to rough house, lets them break the routine, and it seriously throws them off and delays bedtime. My nanny has shared with me that she feels awkward. Obviously, she doesn't want to undermine her employer, but it makes her job so much harder. But my husband also doesn't want her to go home when he arrives, as he can't handle the kids alone. I told him if that's the case, then he needs to defer to the nanny and follow her lead. She knows our boys best, and she has to deal with the aftermath if they don't listen and give her a hard time. My husband feels like she's just an employee, and he's the dad. His salary does pay for her. However, I don't feel this is fair to her. So I told him that he either follows her lead for bed and bath, or he doesn't help at all. He told me that I'm allowing the nanny to take over and replace him. Am I being unreasonable? There is about a million things that I could say about this post, however, I think this comment from a deleted user down below wraps it up so nicely. You were not being unreasonable. I am so angry at these responses. Your husband does not want to be a parent. Your husband wants to be a fun time uncle who comes in, rolls everybody up, dishes out the sweets, but makes sure nobody makes it to their bedtime and then dips out when the children start having an unpleasant reaction to the disruption. These you are being unreasonable comments are unhinged and blatantly sexist. 
Big news, dads also have to be a freaking parent. It is completely reasonable if the only partner doing the parenting puts the foot down on unacceptable parenting behavior. Edit. Because I'm feeling salty on OP's behalf. God, the sexism is strong here. Why does a dad always have to be the fun time guy and mom has to be the downer going and doing the actual parenting? This is a huge problem in society. You're sitting here perpetuating a sexist system as if it's good for children. You know what's really good for the children? Having a father who is an active partner in parenting. It's also completely false that the children won't recognize as they grow that the dad's not giving enough of a shot about them to actually be present in their lives. When they look back at it as adults, it's going to be mom they respect. It was mom who provided the safe, healthy environment for them to grow in. If facts make you feel insulted, you should work on yourself. Man, deleted. I know you took a lot of heat for that, but you were spitting facts. OP, you are not being unreasonable here at all. Your husband gets a clear 1 out of 5 buttholes for not being a parent. I mean, he still has time if he changes his attitude and starts spending more time with his young kids, but right now it looks like he's going down a bad path of being very disconnected from his children. That was r slash am I the A. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content we post every Monday and Friday. Mmm, these videos look nice, I might click on one of these. Mm.